This video is for the 5th Annual IJA Video Tutorial Contest. Hi guys, Don here. Today I want to teach you about top of the head stalls. The first lesson in top of the head stalls is the difference between static balancing and dynamic balancing. A static balance is when you have a little dent and you're able to put something on top of that and continue to balance. It's still a balance, but it's less difficult than a dynamic balance because there's a little spot it can rest in. A dynamic balance is when two round things are on top of each other and you're always moving in order to correct because there's no single spot in which your ball's going to rest. Dynamic balances are possible, but they require a lot more effort. Top of the head stalls are a bit of an in-between, depending on your head. Everybody's head is different, so I need you to do something really quick, which is feel your head. What you're looking for is bumps, divots, ridges, you want to feel exactly where you think the ball might static balance and where it might dynamically balance. There's an enormous amount of places you could put a ball on the top of your head and I want you to figure out exactly where they might be. So my head, for example, has a spot here. On both sides of that, there's a bit of a bump or a ridge in the middle here, but a slight divot right here. There's a bit of a flat spot on my crown. There's the ridges in the back, and of course, the nape of the neck. So as I said before, I have a flat spot here, a flat spot here, one here, and one on my crown. When I learned top of the head balance, I first learned to the side. It's a bit of an easier balance because there is a divot there. Most people want to avoid the ridge down the middle of your head. This is where I learned it originally, and this is probably the strongest point on my head. However, I recommend you don't do the side of your head balance. Not unless you want to learn the other side, which of course, I didn't do. This has led to injury because I'm not balanced on both sides in my neck muscles. I recommend that you always learn the very top of your head. So I've been learning the top, top, top of my head and this is difficult. It takes a long time and I haven't been using it in my busking routines which of course the everyday practice helps a lot. Having to relearn the top of the head stall has been a very difficult journey for me. And that's why I feel compelled to make this video for you today. So before you actually start with a ball, I want you to think about a few things. I want you to think about your posture, being brought up very tall, and having your hips mobile. I want you to think about isolating your head and being able to move your shoulders without moving your head. The most difficult part of top of the head balance comes with putting your shoulder down. So, if you want to practice trying to keep your head isolated and not following your shoulder as you naturally would if you weren't balancing anything on your head, then we can introduce the ball. I use acrylic balls because they're heavy. It's known in the contact juggling community that the skin on your head is a little bit thicker than the skin on the rest of your body. Over time, if you balance a heavy ball on the top of your head, you will develop a flat spot or a divot. I don't recommend doing anything to help this along except placing the ball gently on your head. It will come over time and it does make top of the head balance a lot easier in the long run. But at the beginning, this trick is quite difficult. Putting it in the spot that you've chosen on the top of your head, thinking about growing really tall and putting all of your focus on that spot. Thinking about all of the movements in your body, the breathing, how that's going to affect your head. 
the moment you let it go and how your arm movement is going to affect the ball. And just focusing on that spot before letting it go and thinking about it and making sure that your head's straight and your body's straight to promote good posture when you're doing this. See, even as I lifted my eyebrows, I could really feel the ball move. Take a second here and think about it. Move your eyebrows, think about moving your eyes, and understand that focus on that spot while you're thinking about your posture. Eventually, you're gonna let go. Like I did there, just let go. Keep your arm where it is, because you're only going to get one or two seconds. But feel that one or two seconds. Can you feel where the ball is balancing? Take a second and feel that. Feel the warble. Feel how you have to correct to go underneath it. Mine's lying right on the ridge of my head, which makes it much more difficult. But like I said, over time, you will develop a small flat spot and that'll be helpful. See how the most difficult correction was when I put my arm down and then I'm able to focus outside of myself. A little bit. Try not to drop. Catch it before it falls off your head. Leave it in that spot. Feel where that spot is and think about that entirely. This is me relearning top of the head stall. It's coming, but it'll be slow. Okay, because I've learned this before, I'm going to demonstrate it in the bad spot that I have. Once you feel solid in a spot, and you're able to put your arm down, and you're able to stay with yourself and have a pretty straight posture, you can start taking your first steps or looking side to side. Thinking about your head separated from your chest and your neck and your shoulders. Then take a step. Take a step forward. Take a step backwards. See how far you can walk. At the moment, I'm a bit confined by this space, so I'm going to walk in a circle. Walking in circles is a bit more difficult. Can you see why? Turning your head and going in the momentum is two different things. The top of the head stall, you're going to be putting a forward momentum on the ball when you start walking. And you want to make sure that you're always underneath the ball, although you're pushing the ball slightly forward. Another trick is, of course, trying to get to the ground. It's been a long time since I've practiced in this spot. See how far you can go. Going down and back up again. See if you can spin in circles. First one way, then the other. Ooh, you can tell what way I'm stronger. The way I'm demonstrating this, it makes it look easy. But I want to assure you that this move takes a long time to develop. And the first time I learned top of the head stall, it took me approximately a year of everyday practice. At first I started little by little with one second, three seconds, ten seconds, thirty seconds, and then walking one step, two steps, across the room, then spinning, then going to the floor, 
And each of these moments takes a little bit of time to develop. So be patient. Once you know your spot, it's going to be much easier to simply put it there. So that's top of the head stall. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day. First lesson in top of the head stalls. It's just a little lesson in dynamic balance.